Subscription Gaming! Hello and welcome to Scription TV episode 7 with me, Scription Gaming. And for those who haven't noticed, I'm back! And that means you get to see my beautiful face before the beginning of the TV shows again. Isn't that exciting, ladies and gentlemen? Today's episode, we're beginning a new series, which is the reason why I thought I should be here today. We're going to be beginning a new horror in the... One second. That's better. We're going to be beginning a new horror made by the same people who made Layers of Fear. This one's called Observer. And uh, it's, mm, it, it's unique, to say the least. Also, we're going to be seeing the first two matches of the quarterfinals of the SWTV title tournament. I hope that you'll enjoy. Anyway, on with the show. The year is 2084. If they told me what the world would become, I would not have believed them. First, there was the nanophage, the disease of transition, a digital plague that swept across the land killing thousands upon thousands of augmented souls. A heavy cost for meddling with our minds and bodies. Then came the war, the big one. The great decimation. The West killed the East. The East killed the West. There were no winners. Except for Cairo. The corporation seized power and forged the Fifth Polish Republic. A crooked empire of blood and ash. There was no one left to oppose them. But still, they endured. And so it goes. The rich get richer as the poor rot away in their hovels, desperately looking for ways to escape reality. I am what they fear, a corporate tool of oppression. A despised leech that creeps into your dreams and feeds of your fears. If you don't remember, if you won't remember, that's when they call me. To access you, to gather evidence, to dredge up whatever's hiding in the darkest corners of your mind. My name is Daniel Lozalski. I'm an observer. What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Scription TV with me, Scription. And this is, we're going to be starting a new game today, and this is by the makers of Layers of Fear, and this is called Observer. Yeah, and uh, so I'm not quite sure what to expect with this. I've heard that it's meant to delve into your deepest fears, so that doesn't bode well for me. I'm scared of everything. Uh, as you can see, I'm filming this straight from coming back from the gym, so I'm dedicated to you guys, okay? This is, this is for you. This is for you. For you. Anyway, so I don't really know what to fully expect. I pressed A. No, the game's probably going to crash now. Collectibles, settings, yada yada. Okay, we're just going to go dive. We're going to dive straight in. We're going to see, we'll see what to expect. Well, actually, one minute. One minute! That's better. It's dark. Maybe a little too dark. We'll make this work. Here we go. Come in, Lazarski. Lazarski, you there? Very sensitive. 
Yeah, I'm here. You okay there? I've been hailing you for the past five minutes. I'm fine. I must have dozed off. No rest for the wicked. How's the dream eater treating you? Well, I'm not a vegetable yet. Could have fooled me. Hardy har. I'm serious, Dan. Your signal's all over the place. Have you taken your meds? Uh. Yeah, sure. Wow, that was convincing. Take your meds, Detective. I need you clear headed. Want to check status? And what? Well, oh, take pill. Yes. <laughs> Hmm. There you go. Looking better already. Yeah. Wouldn't want me to mess up. Can you see the headlines? Another leech goes berserk. Don't be like that. It's just... Yeah, yeah. What's this about? Just checking in, or you need me downtown? Nah, just <laughs> a checkup. No oh, one left it's for it's you to interrogate. Sounds pretty bad. Yep, not pretty. The explosion leveled half a block. The place is still on fire. Corporate goons all over the place, securing the area. Covering your tracks, you mean? Careful what you say. This is a monitor channel. Who is this? How'd you get this frequency? Don't you recognize me? Adam? Yes. Well, what's left of me? Dad. What happened? Where, where have you been all this time? Away from you? <laughs> it's funny. I thought it would be easier your voice after all these years but it really isn't come on Adam don't start <laughs> I really thought I could pull it off you know I was so close to making a difference our character reminds me of Mickey Rourke a little bit all free. he sounds like Mickey Rourke in the wrestler and now it's <laughs> can't be for nothing doesn't matter tell me where you are I'll come and get you Shit, Dad. For once in your life, just listen to me. Whatever happens, I need you to remember. You're not in control. Adam, can you hear me? You still there? Adam. God damn it. Dad? Dad. Matriarch, display caller ID. Displaying now. Kravinsky. That's no. Matriarch, locate source of last call. Triangulating coordinates. Come on. Location established. Tenement building. Class C district. Jesus. Adam the stacks. You just had to hit bottom, huh? Oh, good. I was worried I was going to have to drive, but I'm notoriously bad at driving Rock games. Fucking butter. No idea what's going on. Ugh. Is that an apple. Cool. Cool. What the? What's that? Oh, lovely. That's cool. Doc Ock's arm. So this, obviously, I'm guessing this came out after Layers of Fear, so I'm guessing this is after they got a budget a bit more well known. 
because this seems a lot more high end compared to Laser Fear. A lot of disturbing imagery. Robot chicken at the end there. That must mean this is in collaboration with, uh, is it Seth Green? Seth Green, we'll call him Seth Green. Who knows? I don't know. Krakow. Well, of course it's set in Poland, isn't it? Oh, how my friend would love this. Shout out to the Waldeck 4. Join us now! Hard work and patience is all it takes to achieve a civic status upgrade. Cool. Cool. The Polymath 31A. The state-of-the-art holographic displays offers virtual reality great immersion. The mighty processor can handle even the most complex calculations. The kinetic interface allows for maximum comfort and efficiency. Oh boy. What's this, geez? Why you, sir? Oh. Sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Maps. Oh, hello. Need to get out. Easy there, Tin Man. I'm not looking for trouble. Oh, Tenant. Huh? Weird. Oh. Uh, what? No. Family. Family. <laughs> no. Tenant. Um, sort of. Name. The weird man. Uh Grabinski. Leon Grabinski. Tenant. Oh. Apartment seven. Uh, uh, ground floor. Through the courtyard. Turn right, turn left. Straight ahead, turn right. Yeah, I got it. Back with him forwards. Thanks. Mm. Door open. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. Uh, T push, same as the previous games. Oh, look at this craziness. It's all very high tech, isn't it? Attention, citizens. Curfew is now in effect in all Class C districts. Remain in your apartments and enjoy your chosen holographic content. Thank you for your cooperation. O two, O three. O eight. O seven. Wow, this place is a mess, isn't it? What the hell? Ooh, we got crouching in this game. Now oh, what? I've been beat by the game already. Oh! Wait a minute. Oh, it's not! <laughs> There's some clothes moving. I thought I was a person. Hee <laughs> Oh no. No, Adam. Take your pill, bro. Take your pill. Got no head. Take your pill. Dispatch. This is Azowski. ID six five six two one zero. Can anyone hear me? Great. Fucking great. That window is shut whilst we've been talking. Maybe it's not him. Doesn't have to be. Operational efficiency restored. This is Lazarski 65621 setting up a crime scene. RP. I need to check the victim's compass for connections. LT. HN. Gotta start something. Compass implant. Six million volts wasn't enough. What's that? Victim is equipped with an ID mixer. Identification 
Not possible. Damn it. Um, what's that? LB. Biovision. ID check. Failed. Time of death. The head was removed post-mortem. It's possible the killer took it. Motive. Disgusting. Unclear. Blood. Stun baton. Why can't I why can't I find this guy's name? Failed to extract forensic data. What else are we looking for here? It's not exactly the clears. Oh oh good, we can move. What's that? Apparently it's nothing. Controlled substance 45F. That are known as feed. You'd never touch this, Gwen. Hmm. Oh, there's something. There's something. Holographic frame. Doesn't mean anything to me. Got to be some DNA or something in here then. Cupboard. 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 Covered and DNA, anything. What's that? Printed on real paper. Oh. Archaic for you, Adam. Why would it show up if you can't even use it? Oh, there we go. There we go. A processor. Whatever the heckles that means. Oh, God. No, get. Oh, this is rather confusing so far. Oh, no. Didn't mean to do that. Whoops. Anything? No? No. Oh, what's that? There's uh, some up. Give her the goods. A motherboard. This band is busted. The signal must have come from somewhere else. Oh, there we go. That might be it. No. Failed to extract forensic data, but why? Why? Oh, for God's sake. Game. Game. So sensitive. I'm going to have to change it, I think. Identity card. Adam Lazarski Chiron. So Adam was definitely here. Well, if this is, if this is how the game's going to be, then this is going to be a struggle for me already. That mode. The hidden data storage. The encryption is too complex for my hacking tool. I'm taking it with me. Might be able to decode it later. Good idea, sir. Friggin code. Oh, it's 
you say bingo like it makes sense, game. Nope. Oh, God's sake. So he said my log was updated. How the hell do I check my log? Not like that. Clearance card expired. The motherboard. God damn it, there's an extra door. Wow, this is not the clearest of games so far. Oh, what's that? A simulant. in a frenzy. No, I doubt it. The code could literally be anything. I'm lost already. There is, but I don't know the frigging code, bro.
Oh, sweet be Jesus. Sweet be Jesus. Oh man, there's a hack option. Thirteenth of April. Four. There's been nothing that has indicated anything to do with. Oh. Ah, for God's sake. 1984 by perchance, perchance, sir, is it? There we go. Man, I suck at video games. God damn it. Oh. The hell's this? The hell? Downtown Inferno, tragic accident or insurgent attack. Uh, okay. They know. Listen, I know you're a busy man and all, but we gotta talk. Now. I think they're onto me. For real this time. I'm almost certain someone followed me home yesterday. And today I saw this weird guy outside my window. Just standing there. If you can't guarantee my safety, then I'm out. I've got enough problems that it is. Hmm. <laughs> As far as our little mule goes, don't worry. I can manage her. She's not like us. Oh. Excuse me, I'm trying to read. She's not like us. She knows she's in over her head and it clearly terrifies her. You can't expect much from a simple mind. For now, just focus on your work and leave the human relations aspect of our project to me. For the time being, calm down and maintain focus. Eyes on the prize, Jay. P.S. Glad you like the piece. I think it captures the essence of what we're trying to accomplish. Oh, there we go. Tragic accident or insurgent attack. Emergency services are still on the scene after an immense explosion tore a hole in what was once a serene business area of the downtown Krakow. The blast is thought to have originated in the Chiron Incorporated Research and Development Center. Although a joint search effort has been launched into the KD KPD and corporate personnel, the research team scouring the site are yet to find any survivors among the rubble. The exact number of casualties is yet to be calculated, but according to the sources, no high-ranking Chiron officials were injured in this tragic event. As to what caused the explosion, early reports suggest a reactor malfunction, but a corporate executive who wishes to remain anonymous had his own ideas on the subject. We are not excluding anything that could at this point, but this has terrorists written all over it. It is precisely the sort of cruel and cowardly tactics the anti-republican insurgents excel at. We'll have official statements in the matter shortly. If the insurgents were indeed behind the vicious attack, their goals remain a mystery. The center conducted civilian research, focusing primarily on the development, developing new and improved neural links and other consumer products. It seems that whatever third party was involved, their sole purpose was to wreak havoc and destruction, striking fear into the hearts of the public at large. 
When asked to comment, Police Inspector Robert Pekulka, Pekula, Pekula we'll call him, gave a prompt and stern reply. Kyron executives have provided their full support in dealing with the situation. He then retreated to his squad car, clearly distraught by the events of the day. We'll bring you more on this story as it develops. Hey, there was more stuff. Corrupted day, corrupted day, corrupted day, corrupted day. Uh, home security. Open the gate. I've deactivated the apartment security system, leaving the crime scene. Probably get attacked now, knowing me. This just doesn't feel right. You're still alive. Creating your apartments and await further instructions. There is something happening. Don't know what. Bird, little bird. I have no idea where I am. Five, four. Eight. Ah, it was this way. Hey, you there? Come here, come here, quick. You? What is it? What's up with the lockdown? Is it the phage? Was there an outbreak? A malfunction, more likely. You would say that, wouldn't you? To keep us at bay until the cleaners come. Oh, God, they're coming for me. I don't want to die. Calm down. No one's filming. So I can't even get out. KPD, I need to talk to you. Get away from me, man. I got a piece on me, and I ain't afraid to use it. No, you don't. Now, calm down. I'm just looking for some answers. Oh, I know how you get your answers. I got nothing to tell you. Right, I'm completely lost. I think what we're going to do is we're going to end... We're going to have to end this episode here because I have no idea what's going on. Um, we shall continue in the next part, hopefully. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. So, I'll see you again. Stay safe. I will see you in a few. The world crumbled, societies shattered, hope faded, but through it all, humanity found a way. The Wanderer Chronicles Volume 1, available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Read free as part of Kindle Unlimited. Hello and thank you for joining us straight into the action of the first match of the SWTV title tournament quarterfinals as Max Bertrand takes on Dag Boomer. As we saw in the first round, Bertrand managed to take out Zack Sabre Jr. of New Japan and Boomer beat Sanada, both disposing of their New Japan opponents representing the SWA in this round. And unfortunately, so far in the tournament, every SWA roster member who was involved has actually made it through to the quarterfinals, though this match, one of them has to leave. There's no way they can both progress. And so far, early on, Dag Boomer has been dominating this. Probably not to the surprise of anyone, seeing as how physically dominant he was against Sonata. And climbing to the top rope, but changing his mind. As we get a, a shoulder toss there from Bertrand. And now a scoop slam to the larger opponent, dragging him across the ring. Looking to gain some tempo here, trying to dispose of the limbs, and he's focusing on the neck area of Boomer. Possibly a good idea, because he's a very meaty man, so like, working on an arm or a leg could be quite difficult. Especially maybe stretching the back, whereas his neck, 
you know, no matter how much you work, you can work the muscles on the neck, but the neck is going to remain pretty sturdy. And a world strong is slammed by Bertrand, copying the moveset of Boomer, and only a two count as Boomer kicks out. And now goes and, he's, and Bertrand gets him into the abdominal stretch, again working on that neck and body area. And now Boomer just gives him a swift punch to the face. There, you are, you want that? But no, Bertrand gets him into another abdominal stretch. Bertrand has a game plan in this, and he just needs to make sure that he can keep the momentum away from Boomer as he goes for the running body slam. And only a two count, which is impressive that he can lift that weight off him. And now Bertrand goes for Bo Boomer goes for the body power bomb. My mind is, I'm just all over the place here. And only a two count as Bertrand manages to kick out. And now a test of strength between the two as they both go and try and knock ten bells out of each other. And Boomer got the best of that exchange but was so tired on the end he had to drop and take a knee. Get some breath and another judo toss. Hip shoulder toss. He's just tossing him in general. And again, just using his weight advantage and throwing him around and now going for a hug pinfall. And only a one count. Boomer's nowhere near done. And I think Bertrand knew that, but oh, and he, a Samoan drop to the outer side. Oh my jeez. Boomer's serious in this. And now we've got a gut wrench suplex to the outside. And both men are tired. And that gut wrench would have done more damage, especially as he landed onto the concrete below and not the soft mat inside of the ring. The padded mat, should we say. And he literally just picked him up straight off the ground. No, no gift. That was like a deadlift into a suplex. That was impressive by Bertrand. He may not be as big as his opponent, but he is a powerhouse. And now Boomer is going for some clubbing, clubbing shots to the temple. Akin to like Clubber Lang against Rocky. Rocky Free. And he goes for it again, but misses. And now he goes for a world's strongest son of his own. Is that enough? But no, he doesn't go for the pin. He picks him straight back up. And he goes for a... Wheelbarrow back suplex. But um, now we've got another scoop slam. And Boomer just seems to be toying with Bertrand at this point. But no, Bertrand goes for a belly to belly suplex. Bertrand is showing the signs of being potentially like a new a new Kurt Angle. Someone who is a king to that. But no, and he goes for another world strongest slam. Oh, is this enough? Is, Bert, is Boomer going to go for the pin this time? No, again, he's just toying with his opponent. Picks him up and he's going for another wheelbarrow suplex. Is it going to be enough? No, and Bertrand is just knocked straight back down to the mat. There's nothing this guy can do at this stage. Boomer is just having his way with him. Bertrand was doing everything right early on. He was com controlling the momentum, but now Boomer just seems to have... No, and here we go. We've got a sleeper hold in the middle of the ring. Is this going to be enough? No, and Boomer manages to break out of the hold. That must be frustrating for Bertrand. That was possibly his greatest opportunity to put away the big man. And now he's just stood there, catching his breath. Obviously knowing he, he's not taking this Bertrand too seriously if he's willing to just stand there. And now he taunts to the crowd, telling them that it's almost over. And he throws him back on the outside. And catches his breath again in the center of the ring. And I'm going to need to catch my breath at this rate, there's so much going on. And now he's throwing him into the corner and he puts him onto the... Oh no he doesn't, he scoop slams him and now he's going to the top rope for his finisher. King to the Vader bomb. And is this going to be enough? No, only a two count Bertrand showing the fight of a champion here, but no, straight into the World's Strongest Slam. That was not what Bertrand needed right now. And he's got, he's got some momentum again now, but no, and Boomer reverses it again. Swift elbow to the head, and now he goes into another wheelbarrow suplex. And but Bertrand's up first. The fight of a champion from this man. He may be gassing, he may be completely out of it, but no, another gut wrench suplex. He's, going, he's giving everything now to pull this back. He would love nothing more than to progress to the next round of the SWTV title tournament. But all he can hope now is... And what's this? It's almost like a reverse or... A bit like Sheamus's Celtic Bomb. Celtic Cross. Is it enough? No, only a two count. Oh, and a punch to the jaw takes down Bertrand. That might have been his final second win there. This might be the moment Boomer takes it back, but no, Bertrand's obviously got a plan in mind. He's dragged him to the center of the ring. No one in a rope break of any kind with his next move. So what's he got planned? But no, Boomer gets the advantage and he gives him a powerbomb straight into the pin. Is that going to be enough? Oh, and it was. Dag Boomer progresses to the next round of the SWTV title tournament where he will face the winner of the match that is coming up at the end 
of the show. God. And once again, Dag Boomer has displayed his dominance to progress to the next round. And he'll be facing either Yoshihashi or Tetsuya Naito. But first, I want to take you over to a match from NXT between two of their most talented female competitors. Nikki Cross and the iconic Billy Kay. And you can see the tail of the tape there. And now they'll be coming straight down to the ring. And I, for one, am probably going to give this the advantage early on to Nikki Cross. And to those who have seen her matchups against, like, any of the NXT, like, the big, the big hitters in NXT, like, they, they just can't seem to crack her. Like, she doesn't really have a set pattern. She's kind of just insane, to be fair. Akin to a Harley or a Joker. But Iconic Billy Kay, she's going to come out and she's going to give her all here. Recently, she made the move up to SmackDown with her tag partner, and they were known as the Iconics, but NXT have recently called her back down, and I don't see that as a demotion, in my opinion. I see that as an opportunity, because NXT is the land of where the talent, the talent truly lives, in my opinion. And here we go, straight away, Billy Kay goes for the vertical delayed suplex, and a test of strength here is Nikki Cross just demoralizes Billy Kay who early instantly instantaneously in this match looked like she had the advantage and then Nikki Kay Nikki Cross just comes out and just proves that you know, you may be able to do this to me but I'm not I'm not taking any I'm not taking any trouble here I'm gonna take you out you're gonna have your work crowd though I doubt she actually fought all of that because she's as I said she's insane <laughs> and never an unentertaining match with Nikki Cross involved and here we have a reversal into a back a back hold and she just seems to be pummeling Billy Kay and now she goes for another physical right to the head and now she's in the collar but she comes straight out firing firing on all cylinders Nikki Cross and now she goes for a, a leg takedown from behind as she taunts to the crowd cracking her knuckles but a running bulldog takes her down oh and now she's got a jumping elbow to the head and Nikki Cross goes for another swift and another running bulldog Billy Kay must just be wanting to try and get some head trauma on uh, Nikki Cross. You never know, she might knock some sense into the woman, and then, then she's probably definitely going to have the advantage. It is definitely the unruly nature and the the unpredictability of Nikki Cross that definitely gives her the advantage in her matches. A never-say-die attitude. Definitely. Oh, and an, a claw to the ground, taking her straight down. And now Nikki Cross again with a clubbing blow, and then Billy Kay comes back with one of her own. Oh, and a gut punch takes down Nikki Cross. And now we've got a torture rack being applied by Billy Kay. Interesting. Looking at the tail of the tape, Nikki Cross, I guess, is the more decorated out of the two. Um, neither of the women have gained a title in NXT themselves. But Nikki Cross is a three time pro wrestling E champion and a one time W3L women's champion. And Billy Kay is a two times PWWA champion. And that's all she's got accredited to her name. So no, neither women were champions in their prospective promotions at the same time. So they've got no shared titles, unlike the Terry Funk and Shane Douglas match that we saw. But they both did appear in the PWI female top 50. In different years, uh, Billy Kay came 34th in 2012 and Nikki Cross came 40th in 2017. But since then, Billy Kay's only claim to fame is that she was NXT's breakout star in 2016. But then you could argue that everything Billy Kay did was in the past and since then Nikki Cross has maybe come and taken her place? Because Nikki Cross obviously appeared in the top 50 last year and Billy Kay hasn't appeared again since. Interesting, to say the least. And coming back to the action, Billy Kay is still got control here as she goes for a reverse back spread, a gory bomb, I believe it's called. Oh, what a powerful brain buster there. Nikki Cross must be feeling this. Even if she is slightly unhinged, she's definitely got to feel that. Unless she was completely impervious to pain, but we know that isn't the case. And then we have a sidewalk slam into a backbreaker, and Billy Kay just taunts to the crowd. She's like, I ain't, I ain't bothered. I ain't bothered. I got this. Oh, and a series of headbutts takes down Billy Kay. 
as Nikki Cross just stomps now, brutalizing her opponent. And a series of punches to the midriff takes her down, and now she just does a diving headbutt. Standing diving headbutt as well, that was very unique. And another brain buster. So if the diving headbutt didn't do the damage, the brain buster. And Billy Kay now with a running big boot. This goes for the pin. Is it enough? Or oh, a 2.9. Wow, that was close. As Billy Kay continues to go straight for the ocean for going for another gory stretch bomb. I'm sure that's the name of it. And now Billy Kay again with a punch to the middle. This has been very much all Billy Kay. And she goes for a spinning discus there, but obviously lost to sight of where she was. Oh, and the wonderful stretch there on the arm, taking it down, putting her foot into the elbow, not the elbow, into the shoulder socket and dropping it down. Some serious stretch there. Nikki Cross has to be feeling that one. And now Nikki Cross seems to have a little bit of an advantage as she starts to stomp on the leg area of her opponent. But no, she gets straight into another punching match. And she gets, oh no, and she reverses the shot and flicks Billy Kay out of the ring. This is a perfect chance for Nikki Cross to either gain some offense or to catch her breath. And she seems to be taking the latter opportunity in this one. But Billy Kay comes straight back into it with a standing backdrop. And she taunts again, laughing at her opponent. She means nothing to her at this point. Billy Kay, the iconic Billy Kay, believes that she's got this. Hands down. She doesn't seem to be concerned in the slightest with Nikki Cross. And I think that might be a mistake. As Nikki Cross climbs to the top rope and goes for another diving headbutt and she lands it on the opponent's head. My goodness, Billy Kay must be in pain right now. And another standing backdrop. As she drags her across the ring again. She picks her to her feet but Nikki Cross comes straight back with the fist and now she's running at the opponent and goes for a running body cross. Cross body even, not body cross. And a 2.9, both opponents are near the limits at this point. That was a close one. And she goes for another gory stretch bomb and she lands it in the corner. But Nikki Cross is straight back up. Not feeling a single thing there. She refuses to give up on another arm breaker there. And Billy Cage laughs again at her opponent. This is definitely a mistake on the part of the iconic one. And Nikki Cross drags her into the center and only an elbow drop on another standing head. But and now she's going for a, oh, a brain buster in the center of the ring. Is this it? But no, she doesn't go for the pin. She picks up her opponent again. Feeling that isn't enough to put her away. And now Nikki Cross comes back with a back break, backdrop of her own. And she stomps again at the legs of Billy Kay. She's setting her up for some form of leg submission move. Oh, and she's got a, a hip toss there. Down, and she stomps again on the legs. Nikki Cross, oh, and a swift uppercut takes down Billy Kay. And again, she's attacking the legs, just stomping, stomping away. And again, she takes it down. Is this the moment? Nikki Cross is taunting again, making fun of Billy Kay for taunting her earlier. And is this the moment that Billy Kay is going to be put away? But no, she goes for another delayed vertical suplex. Shades of the beginning of this match. But this time, Nikki Cross is definitely feeling it more as a running big boot and a jumping elbow again. But she takes her down. Billy Kay is laughing at her opponent yet again picks her up and she goes for a, another sidewalk backbreaker oh and a running discus elbow another another drop there and Nikki Cross is still taunting even though she's in incredible pain at this point you have to imagine she doesn't care she's just taking she's having fun in this match and a nice DDT there by Nikki Cross and she climbs the top rope again she's waiting for her opponent to get to her feet and she goes for a diving crossbody is it enough but no that was a rope break of poor position in there by Nikki Cross, unfortunately. Billy Kay has dragged her over to the other side of the ring, picked her up, and she's going for a... Nikki Cross goes for a diving... like a headlock takedown, almost. Slingshot, slingshot... oh no, and... What, I don't, I'm not quite sure what that move was, but it was effective. It was very effective on the part of... Billy Kay, taking the victory and going on to have Bracken Rice over the crazed Nikki Cross. Obviously that move was enough to shock the system. And apparently it was a flying body sitters attack that took her down. That was an interesting move to say the least and that's one I'll be keeping an eye out in the future. And so there you go, the winner was the iconic Billy Kay. Now moving on to the next, the second match of the quarterfinals as Yoshi Hashi of Chaos takes on Tetsuya Naito of LIJ. I would attempt to say the LIJ's full name, but as you know, I pronunciate it all wrong. I pronounce everything incorrectly, and I don't want to do that again. 
And early on, Naito seems to be taking the advantage. For those who are unaware, Naito in the black and red trunks and Yoshihashi in the white. And so far, it's good. this is going to be a very even matchup. The two are very evenly paired and are both stalwarts of their respective stables. And Naito goes for the pin, but he breaks out. And they've both got very, <laughs> very similar hairstyles, actually. Like it's almost like they've modelled it on each other. Like they're just, they're just fans of each other's style, and you, you can understand why. They're very stylish guys. And he goes for an armbar takedown by Yoshihashi. And stretch, but it's not enough. He's going to take a much more than that to put away Naito. And now he's been thrown into the corner. Can he optimise it? No. And Yoshihashi reverses it into a swift series of elbows and goes for the pin. Only a one count. That was very optimistic, let's say. Oh, and now a roll up by Naito, but no, no, not at all. It was a rope break, unfortunately. He was too close to the ropes. And now they're just both going for kicks in the middle, and now a chop sends Naito back. And now another series of punches takes Naito down. Yoshihashi's tactic seems to be just blunt force trauma at this stage, just to apply as much pressure as possible. Naito goes for the reverse leg lock, but it's not enough to put away Yoshihashi. We call him Yoshi and he just tosses him to the outside and now Naito catches his breath he's looking sturdy he's looking fine he's looking okay in the center he, he's not really felt too much effect in this match but now oh, a running sit out power bomb by Yoshihashi even if he was fresh that still managed to get a two count from the opponent and now there's a test of strength going on in the center it seems to be a key thing in this tournament lots of tests of strengths have happened and Yoshihashi got the best of that encounter Oh, a beautiful reverse suplex into some form of reverse DDT. That was wonderful. Oh, and look at that. It's, like a, it's almost like a muscle buster. Oh, and a 2.9. Yoshihashi is delivering these massive moves to Naito. And he is feeling the effects. And that was a beautiful sequence of moves there by Naito. There was a reason he's renowned as being one of the top members of the New Japan roster. As is Yoshihashi in that respect. He's come for another run, running power set out power bomb, but he's too close to the ropes. That could have been enough to put the match away. But again, and he just scoop slams him to the outside. What a craziness. And what's he going for here? Yoshihashi runs and he just does a diving leap, suicide dive to the outside, taking Naito out on the floor. And now he throws him to the ring, the ring area. And he's got, oh, and he goes for a backbreaker, a reverse code breaker to the outside. And only a count of 13 before Yoshi uh, from Naito gets back in. And Naito must be feeling the effects of this match now. He's got in another reverse DDT. Fantastic maneuver there by Yoshihashi. And Naito has finally got some offense in again, giving him a swift elbow, taking initiative. Open but no, a standing into Guri takes Naito down again. So far, he does not have any of the answers to what Yoshihashi is questioning him right now. But he goes for a reverse DDT of his own. Wonderful stuff there by Naito. Anything you can do, I can do better. Oh, and a beautiful pin there. Pinning attempt, backdrop, back suplex. Gosh golly, I am stumbling over my words. Oh, and a wonderful series there to get him into the triangle hold? Triangle headlock hold, we'll call it. But no, Naito's not going to tap out there. He refuses, and he goes for a standing in the Enziguri of his own. Wonderful stuff here by the two. They're literally trying to one-up each other on their moves. Very similar styles, and now he goes for a scoop slam of his own. Picks him straight back up. But no, he ends up in another reverse DDT. He's delivered a lot of those to him so far this match, and Naito has to be feeling the effect. And a running clothesline takes down his opponent, but... No, he's just toying with him again, just trying to get as much damage into his opponent as possible. Now stomp to the midriff, picking him back up, he gets tossed into the ropes. But no, a running knee takes down Naito, who seemed to have initiative, but no, a leg sweep there. Takes back into control. Oh, and a wonderful back Huron Kungana. Oh, and now a spinning, a spinning, uh, I forgot what it, I freaking forgot what the move's called, but it is impressive. And a code breaker, is that enough? Is that enough for the three count? No, only a two count there. Naito was, had his wits about him. He knew what was going on. Now a side effect. Wonderful, wonderful move. And now both men are dying, catching their breath as Yoshi gets up to his feet first. Oh, and another code breaker. The second code breaker in recent thing. And he isn't done. He's picked him straight back up. 
Oh, and he's gone for his big move. Is that enough? Yes. And that was enough to see Yoshihashi progress to the next round, the semi-finals, where he will take on Dag Boomer of SWA. Unbelievable. As you can see on the table there, so next week we're going to have Evil versus Leonardo Pasco of SWA and the Sumo King Fuji Akatsuki taking on Bushi, who surprised everyone by taking out Kenny Omega. Anyway, that's all for this show. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you in a few. Well, smoke me a kipper and be back for breakfast. Wasn't that exciting, ladies and gentlemen? Admittedly, Observer is a little, um odd to say the least and then and you know it's odd if it's coming from me but um also we've got our two fi oh, two semi-finalists now dag boomer and yoshi hashi so next week we're going to be finding out a little bit more about observer and seeing if it begins to make sense i hope it begins to make sense i really do also we're going to find out our final two semi-finalists for the swtv title anyway I've got to go. I have things to do, and well, you know, I I can't I can't be here all the time. Anyway, so long. Yeah.